Country File is at 11.30 here on BBC One after we join the celebration of Pentecost with the people of the Church of Christ the King in Brighton. Good morning from sunny Brighton. Have you ever heard of what they call new churches? They used to be called house churches. Actually, their buildings can be quite difficult to spot because they don't exactly look the way you might expect. Well, on this Pentecost Sunday, the day on which we celebrate the birth of the church, I'm with one of the fastest growing groups of new churches in the UK. It's called New Frontiers International. Their services are a lot less formal than many and they're very popular. So why don't you come inside with me, take a look and see what you think. everyone and welcome to Church of Christ the King in Brighton. It's wonderful to have you here. Steve Chalk, it's wonderful to have you here. We hope you have a great time in this hour and for those viewing at home, you're very welcome. You're like our visitor this morning in this hour. I want to tell you that my wife Susan and I came to this church 
11 years ago, just as a visitor. We knew absolutely nobody. We walked into the back of the church, knew nobody. I want to tell you what we found. We found a people who loved each other deeply and accepted us. We found people who loved their communities and wanted to bring the love of God to their communities. And also, probably most importantly, we found a people who loved God with a passion and just loved to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And as Dave and Stuart lead us in worship, I hope you discover something of the love of God and our passion for Jesus as we found. Dave and Stuart, please lead us into the presence of God. Father, we want to thank you this morning that we can enter into your presence with great joy and with freedom. We thank you for Jesus, our Saviour, who's redeemed us. We thank you for the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, liberating us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Jesus, we thank you for your victory over death, that you've ascended to the Father's throne, and that you reign as Lord over heaven and earth.
So basically, you're Brighton born and bred? Yeah, I was born here. I've lived here most of my life. I was away for some years. But I like the town. I liked it in my early years. When I liked the, the nightlife and the parties. And now that I'm a Christian work, I, I really enjoy the fact that it's a university town. It's a conference town. Great place to be. When I was 16, my sister went to London, but to my amazement came home uh, saying she was a Christian now. She'd been born again. I'd never heard that phrase in my life before. And we had a memorable evening when she told me what had happened to her. That very night, I knelt down in our dining room, I remember it very well, and asked Jesus to come into my life and felt it happen. I knew what had happened to me was very real, but my lifestyle was very different to that. I was uh, in the Brighton uh, nightlife. I enjoyed jazz club every week. I used to party a lot. Uh, I'm afraid getting drunk most weekends. And I lived that life, frightened stiff that someone from church might look in. So you were Jekyll and Hyde? Yeah, I'm afraid so. What changed that? One day in church, a young assistant pastor actually preached, and it really cut to my heart that I was a hypocrite. I knew for myself that I had to get out of that lifestyle because it had such a control of my life that if I didn't get right out, I'd get back in. And so I stopped my old lifestyle totally, which meant I lost all my friends overnight. And my first Saturday night not going out, my parents are watching television in one room and I sat in the other room. I thought, so this is abundant life, is it? This is misery, I'm gonna die. And I remember kneeling down and saying, God, help, I can't stand this. Don't play that song for me Cause it brings back memories Of days that I once knew The days that I spent with you And I sat, actually, and read through the book of the Acts of the Apostles in the Bible which I'd never done before. I was absolutely stirred. I thought, this wasn't boring, this was very exciting. Soon after that, I received a new experience of the Holy Spirit, which totally changed my life. It was like I suddenly put on a pair of glasses that I saw more clearly. I felt a new surge of joy. I felt a freedom from my shyness to actually go and speak to people about Jesus, which I could never do before. I just got so excited, I'd found something gloriously fulfilling. I understand Mick Jagger said, um, Jesus Christ is impressive, church I hate. Now that may have summed up uh, some of the attitude of, of my friends. And uh, they, they couldn't stand the formality. They couldn't understand how I could stand it. We used to talk about having a religious throat. So when you come, you park your car, you're singing, as you come through the door, someone gives you a Bible and you say, thank you very much. And everything becomes unreal and weird. So your goal has been to build a church for everyone? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you don't feel, if I go in there, will I do the wrong thing? If I get, see, people are frightened. If I go to church, I wonder if you have to kneel now. Do you sit now? What are they all doing? What do you have to do next? And so I'm not religious enough to be able to handle church. That's what people feel. Well, I want a church where you don't have to be anything. You just come in. Here I am, and I have come to thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Thank you, Lord. And now, actually, we're working with about 130 churches in the UK, and then churches overseas as well. And so we're working in nearly 20 nations now with churches we've helped to start that are like this. Thank you, Lord. This is where I really wanted to bring you because this is the Brighton Centre. We have our big conferences in there sometimes with thousands of people from all over the world. But actually, this is where I first started preaching. 
right here. Yeah, so get a box, put it here, bring some young people, and then people would stand around us, so have three layers of people listening to you, preaching here. Never dream we'd finish up in the big Brighton centre. On the first day of Pentecost, the disciples were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. They were propelled out with an energy and zeal to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus. It was even said that they turned the world upside down. As we sing this song, Fire, let's pray that the same energy, the same passion, the same fire will burn within us to bring the world to the good news of Jesus Christ. sneaked out the meeting is so that I can take you downstairs and show you what the kids get up to while their parents are upstairs singing. yesterday and who won it and we're all happy about that are we I'm happy about that now I noticed some of you this morning you've got your Man United kit on and some of you got Newcastle kit on would you guys like to stand let's have a look at you that is brilliant yeah very very good now Samuel I'd like you to come up on the stage please everyone else sit down thanks very much Sam I want you to imagine that one of your wildest dreams has actually come true. You are now a player with Man United, yeah? How do you fancy that? Yeah, very excited, speechless, fantastic. Now, all good football players, they need a...
ball so you can score a few goals. There you go. Who would your manager and coach be? Alex Ferguson. And what do you think Alex Ferguson would do for you? Mm, train me and encourage me. Yep, train and encourage, that's right. Um, kids, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit wants to do for us. Yeah, when we become Christians, the Holy Spirit, he comes to live inside us. It's like having our own personal coach with us all the time, and he wants to train us. The Holy Spirit trains us to live for God each day, and he trains us to do what's right and say no to what's wrong. And he trains us to understand the Bible, and he trains us to know what God's saying to us. And he encourages us as well, like a coach. You know, when things go wrong and life gets a bit tough, he reminds us how much God loves us and how special and important we are. And he loves to put God's power back in our lives and get us going again when we're down, yeah? So, kids, there's no better coach than the Holy Spirit, no doubt about it. So what we need to do is to live for him and to let him guide us and lead us throughout all our lives. Okay, Sam, well done, mate. Give him a big clap, that's very good. You can keep the match ball, Sam, that's fine. And it's over to Debbie. Thank you, Chris and Samuel. Kids, isn't it great to know that we can have the Holy Spirit with us, helping us, and working through us every day of our lives? That's brilliant, isn't it? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I've asked a couple of kids to come up, so if I can have Sally and Tristan, and they're going to lead us in some prayers this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit for us. Thank you that the Holy Spirit lives in us. Thank you that he gives us his power. Help us always to listen to him. We want him as our coach and help us as long as we're alive. Amen. 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 Sally. Lord God, we pray for people who are suffering and hurting and for people who are lonely and upset. We pray for people who think they have nothing to live for. We pray that the Holy Spirit would come to them right now. We pray that he would show them God's love and give them real joy and peace. We pray all of this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Great. That's fantastic. Well done, Tristan. Well done, Sally. But I want to find out what you do here at Mega Mix every week, because it happens every week, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, yes. So your name's Bob. Uh, Bob, you're, I've heard you're a bit of an expert. What goes on here week by week? Well, as we come in, we do some mega aerobics, and then throughout the morning, we do some worship, we do some games, and we do some teaching. And then at the end of the morning, we get into our mega cells and talk about how God's healed us and do some worksheets. So what with the aerobics, you're fit in every single way. You look a fit man. You really do. It's good to talk to you, Bob. Now, Zoe, what, what do you enjoy most about what goes on here? Um, well, I like it all and it's all really great fun, but the teaching's really helpful and the games are really fun because they involve everyone. Well, I've got some good news for you, actually, Zoe and Bob, and everybody else, because I've been told, I've been given the whisper that you're going to play a new game now, one that you've never played before, and it's going to be boys versus girls. Who do you think is going to win? <laughs> We love celebrating God on a Sunday, but really the heart of the church is in, in our small groups, which meet right across Brighton and Hove midweek. One of my real heart desires is to see people, you know, loving each other and uh, reaching into their communities with the love of God. Here it comes. I'm always telling my friends about what goes on at church or the things we do, because, you know, I'm, I'm excited about it and uh, it's really made a difference in my life. What brought me here? There's people that are professional artists and people that are professional musicians and I just love that because I'm the same myself. Is anything... So I like the opportunity of worshipping God in a, a family of like-minded people. There's old, there's young, there's people that have come from all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of places. It's a church that isn't only to do with religious worship, it's to do with being very active into the community, reaching out with the love of Jesus in a very unconditional way to help people who are hurting, whether it's uh, those in crisis pregnancy, whether it's those with AIDS, 
I myself am involved quite a lot overseas, so in the slums of Bombay and in the war zones in Sierra Leone. I just love being in a church that is totally committed to and passionate about Jesus. my God, it earnestly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. When were you last really thirsty? My first responsibility in the morning is to make the tea. I make tea for myself, I make tea for my wife. Then at breakfast I have another drink, mid-morning coffee, lunchtime a drink, afternoon tea, on into the evening. 
there are several days when you never get thirsty at all. I guess I remember when I was a boy playing football all morning, rushing home, drinking as much water as I could get down, really thirsty. Sometimes people say, I'm dying for a cup of tea. I could murder a pint. I remember once I was in India, the temperature was colossal, and I remember real thirst then. The Bible tells us about the people of Israel leaving Egypt, making the long journey across to the Promised Land. Not like the refugees from Kosovo in cold mountains, but across a desert, thirsty. And God supernaturally provided water for a whole nation, two million people. As a nation, they never forgot that. They were so grateful to God, they used to celebrate His provision every year. They would gather to their capital city, they would gather to Jerusalem on a great feast day. And actually it was on that day that Jesus one day stood up and shouted out. It says in the Bible, He stood and said, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He that believes in me out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, of course, was not referring to natural thirst. He was talking about something referred to elsewhere in the Bible when the psalmist says, As the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul longs for you, O God. Longing for God. Thirsty for God. I remember as a teenager wondering, why are we on this world? Why are we on this planet? I used to cycle down to the seafront here in Brighton. I can remember it vividly, just looking out to sea and wondering, why am I here? What do we exist for? What's the point of life? I had some huge questions I could find no answers for that really troubled me. I guess Mick Jagger summed up that generation with his song, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. The world wants satisfaction. The human race is longing for some satisfaction. It's thirsty. We're a thirsty race. Sometimes people think, if only I could win the lottery. That would solve all my problems. But I find people who've got a lot of money are not free from problems. Some of them still seem to be needing drugs or alcohol. It doesn't seem as though their most profound thirst is satisfied. We're thirsty for peace of mind. We're thirsty for happiness. We're thirsty for purpose and identity. We're thirsty for love and security. The kind of thirst we have, only God can actually satisfy. So Jesus stood up and said, If any man's thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Now, that wasn't rare for Jesus. Jesus often made those kind of statements. We tend to think that Jesus was somebody who gave rules and regulations and said, I want you to have a church like this. This is about my church. No, he said some things about the church, but he said more about himself. He repeatedly said things like, I am the door. If by me anyone enters in, he'll be saved. I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the bread of life. I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the good shepherd. I laid down my life for the flock. Jesus often drew attention to himself. Some have said he was a great teacher. But listen, Jesus was more than a teacher. Here, he's not just giving out information. He's offering life. He's not just giving instruction. He's offering an experience that can satisfy your deepest thirst. These are not just instructions. This is an offer that Jesus made. If anyone is thirsty, come to me, drink. Now it says in the same verse as you go on in the Bible, this he spoke of the Holy Spirit who was yet to be given. He was not yet available because Jesus was not yet glorified. There was a not yet clause. And so if you had pushed through the crowd that day and said to Jesus, yes please, I'd, I'd like some, he would have said, not yet actually. Not yet, because something else had to happen. He had to be lifted up. Now, the Bible uses that phrase in two different ways. First of all, he had to be lifted up to die. He had to be lifted up on the cross. The cross, the crux of our faith. You know, the very word crux means cross. 
It's the Latin Roman word. The cross has always been the emblem for Christianity, whether it's an ornate cross on a, uh, an altar, whether it's a highly jeweled cross, whether it's a massive cross over a, a town, whether it's a tiny cross jangling around someone's necklace. The cross has always been the center because there God dealt with our greatest need. There Jesus was made sin for us that we might be set free by him. Imagine, Jesus died in your place. Jesus was punished for your sins. Jesus took your guilt on himself so that you can go free. Everything that you regret, everything you wish you'd never done, totally forgiven because God made him to bear our sin in his body on the cross. Jesus was lifted up on the cross. He was also raised from the dead. He didn't stay dead. He was raised from the dead and he was lifted up into eternity. He was raised into glory. He didn't stay dead. He said to his disciples after his resurrection, now wait here in Jerusalem before you ever start preaching and you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit before you start. Now this is the day we remember. This is the day of Pentecost. This is the service we are reminded at where Jesus gave the Holy Spirit to the waiting church. They were transformed from fearful to courageous, from scared to joyful. They spilled out onto the streets and testified, Jesus isn't dead, he's alive. He has been glorified. Now glorified, he has given the Holy Spirit to us. The giving of the Holy Spirit to those scattered disciples, those scared believers, was the proof that Jesus wasn't dead in a tomb somewhere. And the giving of the Holy Spirit today is still proof Jesus is alive. He's poured out his Spirit. I'm so glad he satisfied my thirst. I'm so glad he answered my cry. And for hundreds here, and for millions around the world, maybe you're thirsty today. Jesus is still saying, if anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink. I can meet your need. I can come into your life. I can satisfy your deepest longings.
as a church, we've just completed a week of prayer. It's something that we do three times a year. Join with us now as we pick up on some of the themes that we've been praying about through this week. Heavenly Father, our heart's desire and longing is that you would pour out your Holy Spirit like you did some 2,000 years ago. And your early followers, they spilled out onto the streets with power and love and miracles happened in your name. God of Pentecost, we cry to you today, pour out your Spirit again on all the churches of Brighton and Hove. Empower us, enable us, envision us to reach out with your power, your love, to touch broken lives and sick bodies with your gospel in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord God, I want to thank you that you're interested in people of all ages. I want to thank you for this wonderful, close relationship that I can have with you. And that even though many people my age are searching for acceptance, you love me just the way I am. I want to ask that many more people up and down this country, particularly around my age, will come to know you and experience a secure and fulfilling relationship with you. Lord God, I want to thank you that my generation doesn't have to be a problem, but with you, we can be the solution. Amen. Father, thank you for your love and concern for everyone who is suffering and in need. Lord, we see in the cross of Jesus how much you identified with those who are suffering from injustice and cruelty. Lord, we feel particularly concerned at this time about the thousands of Kosovan refugees. And we ask you, Lord, you who governs the nations, give a peaceful solution, we pray, in Yugoslavia. Lord, we ask you, reunite families that have been torn apart and comfort those who are wounded and broken, the hurt, the hungry, the lonely, Lord, the bereaved and the dying. Father, forgive us when we are unkind and selfish, Lord, and give us your love that we might love with your love. Help us, Lord, in the comfort and safety of our lives, not to ignore the cry of the poor. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thank you, Lord, that we can call you Father. Thank you that you are the creator and the source of all life. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let the love, the joy, the peace and the integrity of your kingdom bring heaven to earth in our families, in the world of trade, in education, in law and order, in the arts, and in the media. Let your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Lord, that you make provision for all our needs. We pray for the hungry, for the deprived, for the lonely, that in your love and mercy, you will satisfy them. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Father, we know that we can never repay the debt of love that we owe you. But thank you for your forgiveness. Help us also to be merciful and generous towards others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Help us never to be distracted or hindered from following you wholeheartedly. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We have sung our songs of victory. We have prayed to you for rain. We have cried for your compassion to renew the land again. Now we're standing in your presence, more hungry than before. Now we're on your steps of mercy, and we're knocking at your door. How long? 
you that you hear our cries. Lord, I thank you you're not deaf to your children and you hear our cries. I want to thank you that when we came to you personally and we say we said reveal yourself to us, you did that and we met you and Lord our cry would be reveal yourself to millions up and down this nation. Lord, we want Jesus to be famous. We want Father, we want Jesus to be famous in this City. Lord, we want him famous in this nation and the nations. He's so wonderful. Right. If people could only see him That's for who he really is, yeah. I know that they'd love him and trust in him. And Lord, we're your witnesses. Lord, you made us that. And we say, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Oh God, that we may be full of joy, full of the Holy Spirit. Lord, doing works and wonders in your name. Oh God, we ask you for that. In Jesus' name, as we release into the community after this meeting, we say, Lord, let your spirit go with us. Amen. Let us be full of joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.
Well, that's just about it from the Clarendon Centre here in Brighton. Now, next week, the Heaven and Earth show is back when, amongst other things, Kevin Woodford and Katrina Skepper are going to take a look at the Star Wars phenomenon. Enjoy the rest of your morning. As for me, I'm off to the beach. As a special Songs of Praise this evening.